first of all. When you moved these plates, he found, back and forth mechanically, the voltage started to, to, to change, just moving the plates closer or, or further apart. That top figure up there started to vary. If you've got varying voltage, you've got energy. And this was what he was tapping. Now, that is one source. The other source is what's called thermionic. It takes heat from your body, heat from the air. That is then processed through what is called a triboluminescent substance. And that simply means it's like the phosphor on your TV. The phosphor gets hit with an electron gun, and it emits light of a certain frequency. But if you hit that phosphor with that same frequency of light going the other way, it makes electricity come out the other side, photoelectric effect. All atoms uh, that in our part of the universe share energy between each other in what's called the infrared spectrum, the heat spectrum. So if you get a material that is responsive, instead of to visible light, but to the invisible infrared radiation, then that will convert to electrons on one side of this material, and we put what's called a tuned circuit in a, in a cavity, just like Moray did, and it will strip mine those extra energetic electrons off and into a little spark gap and down to recharge your battery. So those two types are free energy, and there are people working on it uh, in a network that I'm a member of in France and here uh, in uh, Mexico, and Australia, and elsewhere probably, but the, the main part of our membership is in those countries. We are able to succeed uh, with what we've got to varying degrees, but basically if you use the atmospheric one I told you about, this one here, you'll be able to trap mechanical pressures on the, the outer um, uh, Van Allen belt and turn them into electricity and charge batteries, which you then run uh, inverters from, and you've got power to run your home without the power company. Obviously, one of the reasons it has not been widely distributed. Uh. By the way, the thermionic uh, device, um, if you take a nuclear, uh, there are certain types of nuclear reactions you can make to produce a lot of infrared or heat energy. And if you do that inside of a material, uh, of, a, of a vault that's lined with that triboluminescent material, you can convert that heat from that nuclear reaction straight into electricity, which um, may or may not be um, what uh, Bob Lazar was talking about when he talked about his, uh, his alien sport craft he saw with the three gravity wave focus machines out at Area 51. He did describe something uh, which I believe to be what we use ourselves. So whether they use an element 115 and, and bombard it with neutrinos and get heat out of it or whatever, they're actually taking heat, like I'm telling you, and converting it straight into electricity. To a certain degree, solar silicon cells do the same thing for us in solar collectors. Um, oh, come on. This is the backyard. I've just I've got two more holes to fill and put the poles up, and we'll be testing this out in our backyard. That's the charged antenna. You put uh, an insulated wire, insulated to 30 to 40,000 volts, so it won't leak into the atmosphere, and you charge it up, and it becomes your balloon to be compressed by the impact on our outer um, ionosphere and the Van Allen belt. Yeah. All right. Um, hmm. All right, look, I'm not going to explain this. I'm just going to show you uh, some of the uh, water and aircraft that I have made and tested here since that time and some I'm working on now. Um, they cycle about every five seconds. This one uh, was something that I made for a DARPA proposal for a micro um, aerial vehicle for surveillance. Um, this was along the same lines. They weren't accepted, by the way. Uh, so there's nothing secret here. These all employ the principles of vortex spins in um, uh, air or charged air. This is another one we built in Australia. Uh, stateside. By the way, the real things weren't quite as pretty all the time. They had scuff marks and things on them. But anyway, this gives you the idea. And some of them were made out of uh, different materials, fibers composite and things like that. All of these have definite reasons for their design. And that's a plasma craft with the ion peaks on the center vortex, as I've discussed, uh, discussed with you before. Okay, that's probably enough for today.
let's see, have we forgotten anything? Smoke rings, that, that, that. Okay. That's it, folks. <laughs>